I'm Adrian Pedersen today on Upfront. The Waukesha parade tragedy, the suspect with a long rap sheet out on a low bail. I'll ask two lawmakers if the legislature needs to examine state bail laws. Then a new book on Foxconn. Just turns out that government isn't particularly good at venture capital. Author Lawrence Tayback on companies' lofty promises for jobs that don't materialize. And the Wisconsin Supreme Court takes on redistricting. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Hello and thank you for joining us. The Waukesha parade tragedy has left people all over the country asking this question. Why was a career criminal accused of running over a woman in a domestic violence case out on just $1,000 cash bail? Prosecutors charged Daryl Brooks Jr. with six counts of first-degree intentional homicide for plowing into the Waukesha Christmas Parade, killing six people and injuring dozens of others. The Milwaukee County District Attorney later called Brooks's bail inappropriately low. We asked the DA, John Chisholm, to appear on today's show. His office said he wasn't available. We're talking about the law on bail today with two lawmakers on the Assembly Judiciary Committee, the Chairman Republican Ron Tussler of Harrison, and a Democrat Gary Hebel of Sun Prairie. So I appreciate you both being with us for this important conversation. And I think the question really to just kick this off is, is the system broken and does bail need to be reformed through legislation in Wisconsin? And Representative Tussler, I want to start with you. Yeah, thank you. Well, I think that's getting the cart a little bit ahead of the horse. You know, right now we should be looking at exactly what went wrong and why this happened. John Chisholm has provided a few excuses that we've heard. We've heard that the ADA didn't have very much experience, that he had two and a half years, that it was human error, and that it, uh, his policy isn't to do this regularly. You know, I, I don't think the evidence is there for any of those excuses. I, I really think the focus needs to be on John Chisholm for the way he is operating his office. Do you think he should resign over this? I think he should change his policies. I think he should prove that he doesn't, that he believes that this was an error. I think he should prove that his policies aren't working in, in Wisconsin. And if he refuses to do that, then he should step aside and let somebody else that wants to prosecute crime prosecute it in Milwaukee. Representative Hebel, do you think that DA John Chisholm should resign over this? And absolutely not. John Chisholm, the, the John Chisholm is constantly accountable to the public. He's been elected five uh, straight times. The people in Milwaukee like him. They think he's doing a fantastic job. Mistakes happen. And this is a horrible, horrible mistake. And every DA, when they, they, when they go to bed at night, the worst nightmare that they have is something like this occurring. I guarantee you that John Chisholm and any, every other DA in all their 72 counties look at this and say, oh, my God, thank God it wasn't me. But the bottom line is that people make mistakes. This is a horrible mistake. There's no justification for it. But we can resolve part of the problem by giving adequate funding so these DAs are not overworked and underfunded. When you've got 1,600 felony cases that in Milwaukee County, 1,300 misdemeanors that are waiting to be tried, we cannot even provide a speedy trial to these people charged with a crime. That's one of the tenants of our Constitution, that if you're charged with a crime, you're entitled to a speedy trial. We cannot do that in Milwaukee County because we as a legislature have not provided the funding to allow for those DAs to do their work properly. And Ron will agree with that. Does bail need to be reformed in Wisconsin? Yes, I do believe our bail system needs a reformation. There is a federal system of, uh, of uh, incarcerating someone or holding them until they're their hearing comes to the uh, to the fore, and, and I like that system much better. Our current bail system in Wisconsin is antiquated, and it really benefits wealthy uh, people charged as opposed to the the common everyday person. If you can post your bail, you get out, and that's really not where we want to be looking at. The number one concern with this discussion today is public safety. How do we sit, keep our community safe? and free of, of people like, like this person who is guilty of this heinous, heinous crime. And the way to do that is to do a risk analysis of the person involved in this case there was a failure. John Chisholm uh, admitted that, in fact, there was a problem with what happened there because in Milwaukee County, and one of the detriments of the uh, 
coronavirus is the fact that we have an, a huge increase in crime, both in, in uh, misdemeanors and felonies, and the DA's office has not been able to keep up with the number of cases that are there. So we need to properly fund our, our criminal system in order to make sure that our, our communities are safe. And clearly, I think the bail system is one area that, frankly, we've spent a lot of time looking at and trying to improve. Unfortunately, our legislature has not completed the task, and there are things that we need to do to make the system more efficient, more fair, and really protect our communities. Well, we need to work on that. Illinois eliminated cash bail. Do you want to see that, Representative Hebel? Many states have, and the federal system really allows for an, a risk assessment. You look at the person who's charged with the crime, you determine several factors. Is this person a flight risk? Are they a danger to the community? And are they likely to commit a crime again? And clearly those are the factors that we need to take into account. Not whether they've got enough money to post bail or, or whether they can uh, get that money. The key for us is to keep our communities safe. And we really need to protect our communities by making sure that any individual who is likely likely to commit a crime or is a danger to our community must be incarcerated until the hearing date to make sure that our community is safe. Representative Tesler, your thoughts on that? Yeah, so our current system has risk assessment in it. There's 11 factors. Those factors include the nature and circumstances of the charge of defense. It's in 969-014. It has a potential penalty of charged offenses, the history of the mental health illness or substance abuse of the defendant, their criminal record, the evidence of flight, you know, any current restraining orders that they have. And in this situation, the ADA would have known all of those things about Brooks and still decided to do a thousand dollar bond. They would have known this. This wasn't a mistake. You don't go into a felony bond hearing and not look up the basic stuff. I mean, you can find a history of somebody's uh, um, charged offenses and their criminal record on CCAP. The complaint is right in front of you. It goes in the file when you walk in. So there's no way they didn't know that. So I should, you know, maybe we should change the system. Maybe we should get more aggressive. You know, I'm all for that. But at the same time, you know, these folks knew what they were agreeing to do. This ADA and John Chisholm's office and their policies set this up to happen. This is like playing Russian roulette and, you know, with these ridiculous low bonds. And eventually it's going to blow up. And it blew up in this situation in a big way, and it's time to change things. But Milwaukee can do it right now. They don't have to wait for a constitutional amendment like we have to do at the state level. Do they need more resources? I mean, the DA is saying they're understaffed, they're overworked, and it's a pandemic. So, Representative Tussler, I mean, is that something the legislature needs to work on? Well, Gary and I have worked together on these issues, actually, to try to get our, our district attorneys and our judicial system more money. And, uh, you know, that's something that's been great bipartisan work that we've been able to do together. And Governor Evers has been happy to sign. So, it's, it, you know, there, there's been efforts to do that already. And we still have this result. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do more, but this result is the key. And, and Milwaukee has control of this. They're the ones that fix this. Ron and I have worked together for a long time. I've been in the legislature. Uh, this is my ninth term, and we have worked diligently to try to get issues like this resolved for the benefit of our citizens. We have to provide adequate funding especially for our major counties in the state where crime is more significant. And we have to make sure that we have adequate funding for our DAs so that they can properly execute the job they have. And uh, with the backlog that we have in Milwaukee County, we as a legislature should be looking to help Milwaukee in, term of fun in terms of funding so that they can get the DAs, assistant DAs that they need in order to carry out the functions that they have. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I appreciate this discussion. Definitely something to follow up on. Thank you both. Later on Upfront, redistricting and why the latest legal action is considered a win for Republicans. But first, a new book digs into Foxconn and the 13,000 jobs that never materialized. The author of Foxconn, next on Upfront.